Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Garmin G1000NX and VNAV. Now it's worth noting now that the way the VNAV has been currently implemented is that they can only really be used to control descents and not ascents. There's a little couple, I guess I want to call them tricky things that you can attempt to do in order to have some control over ascents, but keep in mind that the based model of this is not going to allow you to have that control in the same way that you do in say an airliner. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got and get started. So first things first, uh, when you're working with VNAV, you got to remember that you have to dial in the independent altitudes that you want to operate from. Uh, honestly, most of the VNAV stuff we use is going to be on the approach side of a particular flight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to float down to the right page here. I'm going to go and give myself a couple RPM because, you know, we don't want to get a lot of lead on our spark plugs here. After doing that, what I'm going to do is hit the FPL button, and you're going to notice we have a bunch of altitudes. Now, the way VNAV works is it's always top down. I know for those of you who are familiar with airliner FMS is that you can go ahead and dial in like a thousand feet here, 10,000 feet here, and a thousand feet here, and the plane will go, whoa, like that. It's not going to quite work that way in this particular implementation. Instead, what we're going to do is pick our cruise altitude on the first one, manually get up there, and then once we're there, we're going to use the VNAV to step us down. I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an altitude of cruise of about 5,500 feet. So let's go in here, 5,000. If anything, I consider VNAV to be more of a sort of a descent assist is kind of the way I've always thought about it. Press enter. Now notice as soon as I snap that, it turned this nice little blue to say, hey, we're ready to rock. Cool. So if we didn't do anything now, our VNAV is basically set to have this altitude. But what I really want to do is get up to Orange County Regional and I want to start a descent and arrive at Kiwi, Wiscasset, at 500 feet above pattern altitude. So what I'll do is I'll scoot down to my pattern altitude, my destination, and I'll go ahead and dial this in directly. So let's go pop this in here. Uh, we want to be, let's say 200 feet, so it's 1,700 feet. Perfect, enter, enter. So now what's going to happen is, after we cross a Portland, Maine here, if we don't change this number, we're going to start descending when we start getting close. But since we're here to play a little bit, let's go ahead and play. So what I'm going to go up to do is I'm going to go up to DAW here. I'll go ahead and tweak this. We'll say we want to climb, uh, we'll descend down to 5,000 feet here. Make it, whoa, 95,000 feet. That sounds fine. Now you're saying, well, what happens if you put in an altitude bigger than the one you picked? Well, let's show you. See that big old X through it? That X says, no, bad. Don't do that. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I'll fix it, I'll fix it, I swear, I'll fix it. So I can come in here and I'll be all sneaky-like and I'll put this back to 5,500. Or actually, like we said, we're gonna go down to 5,000 at this particular destination. So let's drop down to 5,000 right now. Now you're saying, well, wait a minute, hotshot. What if you went up here and were to change this first altitude to be 4,500? Can't you get away around that limitation? Well, no, you can't. As a matter of fact, if I demonstrate it real quick, let me show you what's gonna happen here. Boop, see how you got an X through it? does not approve. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll come back up here and put this back to 5,000. And you'll say, whoa, 94,000. That sounds like a good altitude. And I think we're going to get that pretty quick. So now we're back up to 55. It's happy. So when we get to Portland, let's go ahead and decrease our altitude to, let's say, 3,500 kind of a thing. Keep in mind, if you're flying certain approach plans, this VNAV is your best friend in the universe for making this easy. It looks like a pretty good descent profile. Actually, if anything, let's make that a little bit smaller of a number here. We'll make this uh, down to, let's call it 3,000 feet. All right, perfect. Bye, boop, boop, boop. But so notice we have nothing in the world to help us get to this altitude. A lot of times you can set your VNAV up during the flight versus, you know, down here on the ground. But again, this is demonstration purposes. I'm happy with that. All right, good, 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 and looks good, looks good, solid, solid, solid. So what do we have to do now? So let's go pop back over here. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and activate the flight director. Uh, we're gonna get a couple notices. First one we're gonna get is Alts. Uh, Alts is gonna give us a heads up saying, hey, just so you know, um, we wanna go ahead and tell you that we are waiting for an altitude. So that's good, that's what we want. Unfortunately, I currently select that altitude is zero. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna dial that altitude up to our first altitude. Now, fortunately, because we're using VNAV, it actually will remind you what that altitude is right there on the right. So I'll go ahead and grab that, go pop, 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 pop. Perfect. So we got 5,500 feet here, we got 5,500 feet, and it's just as our constraint. This number will change, and I'll show you exactly what I mean when we get there. So at this point, if we wanted to, we could get all goofy, and we could go ahead and arm nav. What we cannot do, however, is arm our VNAV, because remember, our VNAV is for descent, not for ascent. So we could push this button. Look at this. Ah, come on, work, man, work, work. Not going to happen. But what I'll do while I'm down here on the ground is I'll press flick. <laughs> this is the world's most uh, brutal version of flick here. Let's set this to 100 knot climb. This is like the most controlled flight ever. <laughs> nice. Let's go. Whee! 
Now, I was at a fly-in uh, the other day, which was really cool, and they actually had a V35 version of the Bonanza. So if you accidentally get a video about some Carinado update that came out, uh, you probably know what the inspiration for that was. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a good old-fashioned standard, ridiculously not standard, dangerous, you'll never do this, please take off. We're going to go ahead and uh, slap those landing gear up, get a little bit of altitude underneath us, go ahead and pop the flaps up. Now, of course, in the real world, when you jump those flaps, your pitch control goes, whoa, like this on you. It's not pleasant. And we're going to go ahead and do an illegal maneuver here. Boop, boop, boop. I wouldn't call it a legal maneuver, but I will say that if there's anybody in the traffic pattern, um, yeah, let me have your license. You're done. This is nice. Oh, boy. Whenever you turn like this, by the way, in the real plane, you get that nice little, like, rush and kind of all the blood getting pulled down to your feet. So not the most comfortable sensation. All right, I'm swinging around here. I'm going to go ahead and start leveling ourselves up. We'll start heading up to orange. Uh, don't worry, I will skip parts of the trip that aren't relevant for our journey. <laughs> Look at this, man. I'm, oh, man, look at this. Wow, does this thing climb. This is like a Beechcraft Duke, if you've ever seen one of those. The Beechcraft Duke, by the way, they had the brilliant idea of uh, taking out the regular engines, which are already overpowered, and go ahead and slapping in even bigger engines in the form of two turboprops. All right, let's take a look at our symbology. So right now, we're on GPS. It's green, which means we're on. Our AP means our AP is engaged. It's not flashing. Over here, we have flick. That's flight level change. That's our pitch mode currently. We have a selected climb speed of 100 knots. Pretty close. And we have alt, meaning that we're trying to capture a specific altitude, in this case, 5,500 feet. Now, for those of you familiar with the VNAV that we have in airliners, what you'd be doing here is you could set this altitude to 10,000 feet, and this 5,500 feet would catch and stop the aircraft from crossing that point. That's not going to work that way on the way up. It's only going to work that way on the way down. Let me show you. All right, here we are. So now everything is ready to rock. So there's a bunch of little things we have to kind of keep an eye out for. Uh, one thing, for example, uh, we have a total distance of 44 nautical miles to get to our destination. The other thing you want to know is currently, if you take a look at our VNAV profile, our VNAV profile go ahead and tells us that we're 5,500 feet is our target, and our time of descent is 1533. Now, when you come over here, you realize that uh, we're already at our correct altitude. And you'll also notice up in this upper right corner that it's not going to say anything about the VNAV path on account of the fact that there's no altitudes that are selected on our flight plan that are below us. So what I'll do is I'll skip right before we get orange. All right, we're just crossing from orange now. So this is a couple different things. Uh, first thing you're going to notice is up here in the upper left corner, or upper right corner, I should say, you'll notice that the altitude constraint or the suggestion we should be doing is now at 5,000 feet. The other thing you're going to notice is if you come swing over here, you're going to see in 24 minutes, we're going to suddenly get a cue that's going to remind us that we need to go ahead and begin our descent process. Again, notice by mangling the VNAV button, nothing's going to happen yet. We need to have something to force us to start our descent. Now, one of the tricks that some people use is if you come down here to the bottom right corner, this is the VNAV D button. If you press that, what it will do, actually, before you even press that, select the target, then press it. It will ask you, would you like to immediately activate your vertical direct descent to this particular altitude at this position? You can say, yes, I do, or no, leave me alone. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. All that's going to do is basically calculate everything we've already calculated. And again, pressing that VNAV button is not going to do anything for me yet because we're not in a position where we can actually start our descent. Now, some of you are like, well, can we tweak that start of descent? Like, this is kind of like, you know, annoying. Why can't we just push it? It's just not how it works. So what we can do actually is uh, swinging down over here. So if I use this controller here, you'll notice if I come all the way down here, there's an item that allows me to select my descent angle. So what I can actually do here is I can increase my descent path. Let's say I want to do a uh, five degree descent. You can see my new top of descent is 23. Let's say I want to go down to a three degree descent. I can come in here. Now, if you want it to be an incredibly leisurely descent, you could come up here and do like a one degree descent, in which case it's going to be the world's most relaxing descent because you're apparently going to come down at all. Now, in the regular version of the G1000, you can actually swing over here and set the exact feet per minute, which is awesome because you can dial, give me 500 feet per minute, and it will start the descent at exactly the correct time. So what we'll do is we'll skip about 21 minutes. All right, now we're in business. Notice a new symbol appeared, this guy right here. This is to let us know we can now enable VNAV. So if I press that, we're basically going to allow it to go ahead and grasp onto the controls and actually start descending. For this to work, however, we have to select an altitude below our current altitude to make it actually start our descent. So now that that's all been selected and I press VNAV, since we have an altitude lower, we're within a minute of our top of descent, and we've activated, we have this new option that appears on the screen that says V path. And now that that option has been selected, the aircraft is now descending without me giving it permission. Remember, we can only do this down 
we have to make sure it's selected and we have to select an altitude that is going to be underneath the constrained altitude in order to make it begin its descent. So what I'll do real quickly is I'll speed up time a little bit. Remember, we chose a one degree descent here, so we're only getting about 250 feet per minute. Not very quick, and you can see very clearly that these new items have appeared on our screen. So what's going to happen is we're going to get pretty darn close. Notice we have the little Alt-V here to remind us of what's going on. And we're actually going to stop descending when we hit 5,000 feet. Ka ching Do you see how we're still on Alt-V mode here? Now we're at 5,000 feet. Alt is the standby mode. Alt-V is the control. That little V tells us it's a V path now. The other thing we want to see now is you'll notice we have this 3,000 feet selected. That's giving us a heads up saying, hey, uh, by the way, the next constraint is going to be 3,000 feet. Now that we're on Alt-V mode, we can literally let go and have the aircraft go ahead and fly ourselves down. Notice we've captured Alt, but we have V path captured mode on. This means that when the next constraint comes around, it will descend automatically. So I can see our next descent is going to be in nine minutes and four seconds. So what I'll do is I go one, two, three with my time accelerator. And we'll show you exactly what that's going to look like here. So again, this is going to be constrained. V path is on the standby mode. We know that we're going to begin our descent. When this says about 45 seconds to a minute to go, you're going to see that little arrow up here. Now, at any point, we can come in here and adjust the angle of our descent by popping in here and quickly changing that number. We can also shut VNAV off at any time by canceling it or by just shutting it off by pressing this button as well. Now, notice once you've got in the VNAV, I call it the pipeline, you're good to go for pretty much the remainder of the flight, assuming all the constraints you dialed in make sense. Now, some of you are like, are you really sure there's no ascent mode? Like legitimately, there just isn't an ascent mode in this kind of an airplane. You need something a little bit more kick to be able to safely ascend there. Let's go ahead and give it one more whack of time acceleration. Now we got five minutes and 50 seconds. All right, we're getting close. Slow down time a little bit here. I got uh, six, seven seconds. So you can see we have a minute to go. And as soon as we had a minute to go, did you notice that little line suddenly appeared again? You also can see that the pre-selected vertical speed is right up in here represented by that carrot. We also know that everything is queued up because our selected altitude is below our constrained altitude. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up time a little tiny bit more. And there we go. The aircraft is now descending without any human interference, which is dangerous because, you know, if there's a mountain or something, or, of course, we're in the real world here, you'd have Portland's airspace and they would not take kindly to uh, just zipping through without permission. But notice now it's hands off. Everything is going to be controlled. When we get down to 3,000 feet, it'll actually level itself off. Is there something else you probably observed when we did this, however? And that's the fact our speed is coming up. Why is our speed coming up? Well, the reason is we're descending. And one of the problems you're going to have is I reach through the throttle right here. Let's go ahead and pull that back. Go ahead and bring my mixture back in. You're going to notice that as the speed change, our vertical speed will change as well. You can do some really, really dangerous things here. If I pull the throttle back to, let's say, 15 inches of mercury, the plane will start to slow down, and you'll watch our vertical speed start to slowly work its way up because we're not traveling as fast over the ground. So it's worth noting that that can be very, very problematic. So um, let's show you one more trick with this. I'm down to our 3,000 feet right as we court across this international airport directly below us. You can see, look at how sweet this is. Man, this would be nice. Uh, last two times I've flown in here, by the way, I've always get this runway, and there's this really neat little place right here. This is that kind of little place. They let us ride around in the van even though we were parked right there, which I thought was pretty amusing. Kind of nice, kind of nice. So we're theoretically going to cross that position at exactly 3,000 feet. And if I take a look right here, you can see we're going to cross it basically exactly at 3,000 feet. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. That is vertical navigation at its finest. Now you notice we've leveled off and we have 1,700 feet selected. We can continue with our process here because of the fact that the 1,700 feet right here is selected and we've selected an altitude under it and it's on our active profile. The other thing we can do, let's see if this goes ahead and behaves this time. Go vertical direct. Yes, we want to activate it immediately. So all that's going to do is I make us look kind of funny on account of the fact that in order to descend from 3,000 feet to 700 feet, is going to take us a very, 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 very long time. So uh, we're not going to worry about that too much, but instead, in about 10 minutes and 55 seconds, it will automatically uh, pop that little thing up and it'll bring us down to a landing. So there is the wonderful, amazing VNAV all basically showed off. The big thing is you got to remember is it's a descent only number one. You have to preset everything number two. And the other one, this is really, really important. When you start your descent process, you have to make sure you select an altitude lower than your constrained altitude. Otherwise, it will not automatically descend. But other than that, enjoy.